Hi there, Joel here from the Octopart YouTube channel and the Circuit Pulse Show. Now, recently on the Circuit Pulse Show, Inga guided us through our recurring segment component corner, where we sort of talk about some components that we're finding out in the world that are doing interesting things. Inga decided to tell us all about Arduino, which is sort of the maker's favorite. She walked us through the community hub. She talked about her various uses of Arduino and really outlined why it is sort of the maker's choice for beginners in this space. It's a really cool conversation. I think you'll enjoy. Check it out. And today's component section, we are going to be talking about nonetheless, every maker's favorite Arduino. And I know every maker and every person who is starting engineering has played with Arduino. Arduino is a microcontroller that is simple and easy to use. I mean, like when we're starting off with like projects for doing like, you know, a line falling robot or like, you know, making our own things with lasers <laughs> or anything like that, or like a alarm clock or anything like that, we use Arduino. And I'm going to kind of give you the basic rundown about what Arduino is, how the hardware is kind of compiled. And what I'm going to basically do is going to show you each part and kind of explain to you everything about it on the component section. So what I'm going to do first right here is if you can see this properly, let me know if the view is good. That's good, yeah. So here we have the header pins. This is the digital section, and then we have the power section as well. On the other side, we also have this other section for analogs, and we have some other pins as well. This is what we use for either getting power, grounding for you know analog systems, for you know putting in for digital pins, and you know to control certain sections, like for an LED. You want to say like, okay, well. We're going to turn on, you know, an LED with the number one, and we're going to turn on one section on our breadboard. This is where you can be able to control individual parts. And like, if you need to have um, for a photoresistor or for any other component that needs more any specific um, information, like a photoresistor, you need to use analog or anything else like, um, and was it the potentiometer? You could be able to control it with this as well. Now we have here as well. Let me see if I could be able to point out for you. This right here is going to be your PID. This is the ATM Mega 328. And then we also have um, the transistor, if you could be able to see here, the transistor around here. And then we have the SOT. Then we have the LEDs, as you could see right here, the TX and RX. These are just simple LEDs. The um, TX and RX will tell you whenever you have them connected from the bottom around here. And then we have, you know, our crystal, I can never say that word right, a silly, a silly, a silly sitter. I'm oscillator. 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 Yeah. <laughs> oscillator. I probably have to skip that out. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> but yeah, so this, this is a super fun um, thing that everyone should use, especially when learning um, to make your own things. This is very easy, very friendly. The software that you can use is very easy to understand and like you know they have different versions of arduino this one right here is arduino uno they have the arduino mega which is much more bigger it has much more headers that you're able to use and then they also have the arduino nano the arduino nano is also one maker's favorite to use for especially using on a breadboard i liked using this because i was able to use it for my laser control project for backing up my car into the garage and being able to tell whenever i would pass the line i, I didn't attach the laser on here yet but it would <laughs> set up the buzzer here for whenever you know i passed the laser line and it would let me know that how you know i had gone beyond the distance so as you can see i started on some jumper wires and i added a resistor as well but this is super easy to use, very minimal, very functional for everyone to use. And one thing I love about Arduino is that they provide a lot of easy projects that you can be able to follow on on their project hub. And you can be able to get this on Octopart. All these things you can be able to get on Octopart, the Arduino Uno, the Arduino Mega, and the Arduino Nano. And I know Arduino also came out with a Bluetooth version or the Nikola Vision section, and they have a Wi-Fi one as well. So definitely check that out. Now, I'm going to see, Joel, can you be able to pull up the project hub or do you want me to show? Yeah, let's have a look at this project hub here. Okay. So one thing I absolutely love about the Arduino thing that they have is that they show you how to use all different components that you can be able to find on Octopart. Like, for example, the soil men um, moisture sensor, you could have like a thermometer or you could have that little um, water reader on it. You could be able to measure the soil contents, be able to see how much water it has, how much it, it needs or anything like that. 
and like it'll, it'll tell you, okay, well, this is the code you need to do. This is how you would set it up. It'll explain what you need to do as well. And you can show you the layout of, okay, well, this pin will need to go to analog in, this pin will need to go to digital. So you can be able to read on the thing. And then if you have an LCD screen, you can be able to see, okay, well, it's saying one, that it has water, zero, that it has no water. And it makes it very simple and easy to use. And I love how they have all these examples and diagrams to make it super easy and visual for everybody else to be able to make their own projects. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, have you done a bunch of these these projects from from the Project Hub? Yeah, I found some of them, but like the thing is, like a lot of stuff that I have wanted to make, they weren't on it. So like, yeah, I like like with Louise, like sometimes we tend to overcomplicate things. <laughs> like we yeah. want to do too much, and then sometimes the programs can't handle it. Like you know, the the microcontroller is good for like simple tasks, like you know, turning on and off or anything like that. But when you want it to do more complex tasks, like a Raspberry Pi, you're going to need to have more you know, machine capabilities in order to be able to handle that load because then it's too much processing and everything like that. But yes, no, um, I have looked at the Project Hub for some things, you know, some ideas like, you know, watering my plants, that was one of them. Um, another one was for uh, like a little door alarm was another one. And then like when I was trying to figure out, okay, well, how is gonna, you know, put in this um, buzzer and how loud did I want to be able to like gauge it or anything like that. And like with the photoresistor, okay, well, I know there's different lightings that you would have like for a fluorescent light compared to like a regular warm light. They have different readings. So you have to be super careful with that. And especially when you're doing your line falling robot car, the resistors and depending the light that you have, it's going to have different readings for every light. Like fluorescent, I think is like 432. And then like, you know, for a warm daylight um, light bulb is probably going to be like 1,620 in, in the coding that you have to write it down so you can be able to recognize that. And like, ah. these are things that you don't take into factor until you're actually in the force because like, you could be using your flashlight, but you're not going to have a flashlight in real life like when it's reading right. it. And if right. a shadow goes over it, like, you know, that much variation is going to really count in. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So what what makes Arduino stand apart from similar sort of like early, you know, uh, kits or uh, things that you would encounter to help you build these projects? Is it just that they have like such a nice, huge, like bevy of easy to understand resources? Is that basically what it is? I think it's basically that and also kind of like, I feel like they were the first ones to really, you know, push this out there to makers and creators and everything like that. Like they made it so easily accessible. They made it so friendly and everything like that. And like, yeah, it's definitely their projects outlines that they have, you know, their descriptions. It's very open source and everybody can be able to contribute to it and help out with it. So it's really become like a community favorite. And I think that's what has really been helping back it out because Everyone knows Arduino. Everyone has played with Arduino and like everyone can afford Arduino. So that's what yeah. makes it super marketable. And like, you know, like everybody wants it. Everyone can have access to it. It's not like, you know, Raspberry Pi, like, you know, you never know when it's going to be in stock and whenever you want to try getting stuck, it's sold out and you're like, oh, and then when you right. want to buy it, like someone's retailing it for like $150 just for like a regular like Raspberry Pi, like that's a, like a, a version two, like that doesn't even have the new models on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right. So yeah, That's I feel cool. like this is definitely, you know, like something that everyone can be able to have. It's accessible, easy, follow through. And like, you know, it, it's simple. It's simple. That's all that you need because sometimes things can get a little bit too complicated. And when it gets complicated, you get frustrated and you don't want to learn and you don't, you, you get very discouraged on it. So I feel like this is definitely the friendly way to getting into, you know, STEM engineering, you know, learning to create your own projects and everything like that. And I mean, like in, in my engineering classes, we have used Arduino. So like whoever says that our engineers don't start with Arduino, I don't know where you're coming from. This is what <laughs> I have experienced. I know a lot of people as well. So, hey. <laughs> do they use Arduinos in like elementary schools and like junior high, yes, like getting they started? Do. Oh, yes. Cool. Like, and the thing is, well, I haven't come, I haven't grown up and been in an American system. So like, I know like when I was teaching and doing uh, outreach for robotics and everything like that, this is what I was teaching them. And like, that's what the teacher was also trying to encourage them too. So like from what I've been hearing from other people as well, like Louise, she had in her elementary school, they were also doing like engineering and like, you know, products like this. So Arduino is mainly the main staple and foundation of everybody being able to learn these kind of things. I've never heard of another product that somebody else has used to learn robotics or anything like I've never heard of like, um, um, ESP32 or like is that, um, STM32 or like, you know, a Raspberry Pi being the first intro to, you know, engineering or like, you know, microcontrollers. And right, right. So, yeah. 
Oh, gotcha. Well, that's really cool. What What's your some of your favorite stuff that you've done with an Arduino? Um, I would definitely say the laser, um, the laser project with the car. I've also built my own robotic flower. As you can see there, I took a whole weekend to be able to build that. I had no tutorials. And that's what I was saying. Like I could not find on the Arduino project hub. Like there's no tutorials on how to be able to build my own animatronic robotic flower. And right. so I had to figure that out myself with the servos. I had like five or four servos and being able to pull back the things and create my own little mechanics and everything like that. So like I'm planning to put my own one on the project hub. But yeah, so like all of this stuff, you know, is some things you figure out, some things you're able to find or some things you can be able to kind of tweak a little bit and able to use it for that. But That's I would right. say the parking garage, the um, the lasers, the um, robotic flower and like the line following robot car would be one of them. Very cool. I want to I just want to pull up. Uh, let's let's share here. I want to pull up on Octopart so we can see. Yes. what we got when we go to octopart and search they for even have Arduino. a robotic arm that you can be able to do there we go yeah that's what we're looking at right here right uh-huh what is and this thing robotic that's arm the robotic arm like that's um i think i think that's probably like a 3 dof or like a 5 dof that's like you know access point so like how many uh, points you can be able to move on the joints wow that's so cool yeah so they have that one that that one's a kit and like okay so that's like the mega one Yep. Like I was showing here earlier. Very and then cool. the, um, the other one that you were showing, the development board. And then it, what, what I like is that they also have the kits. And like, that's super helpful. But I see yeah. like they have like a lot in bulk. So like, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like for like, you know, like the school education system, they're going to be buying like, you know, for a classroom of 30, then that would be. Yeah. Very I mean, imagine, look at this, you know, educational development kit. Yeah. If a teacher had this for a single class, I mean, you could. You could base an entire program around that, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's so cool. And these prices are super affordable for just the standalone Arduinos. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is really, really cool. And one thing I absolutely do love about Octopart is that it shows you everywhere you could be able to find to buy it. What's the yeah. price is that? Like, you know, what's the stock thing? Because like, suppose I want to get like 15 or like, you know, a, a, a thousand of them. I like, I, I'll probably have to order from each several one. Or if I know like one store has it more, then I will be able to order everything all in one and not have to worry about, okay, tracking each one. Yeah. And like, you know, uh, just for people who are not familiar with Octopart, you know, here's kind of a brief run through. You're seeing the stock from all these different distributors. Uh, and you can also like add this to your own build materials. You can watch it to get notified about something. Check out the data sheet here. So, mm -hmm. I mean, for if you're interested in any of this Arduino stuff, uh, Octopart, you can find out a lot about it and if it's going to work for you and all kinds of fun stuff. Thanks so much for checking out that excerpt from the Circuit Pulse show. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like this video. Down in the description, you're going to find links to more excerpts and full episodes, so go ahead and check those out as well. Give us some love. We really love making the Circuit Pulse show, and we would love to keep doing it for you. I've been Joel. I'll see you on the next episode.